All right, welcome. This is my first unboxing video. I'm going to jump right into the NP9877 by Sager. Uh, it's a remodded Clevo P750 TM1G, and there is a bonus at the end. I am going to do the unboxing here for you. Uh, do it stream style like Twitch, which I love to do, and why I got the computer in the first place. So here I'm going to go ahead and cut the box open and pull out the parts, which the computer more or less came with the machine itself. Power supply is 330 watts, so it's a big uh, beastly machine trying to run all that stuff through there. But this is the six core 12 thread um, Intel machine. I think we all can agree it came out of there with some competitive pressure. They wanted to get this processor on the board. Uh, Clevo, as usual, making replacement desktops, slaps it right into a laptop, and we'll see how it goes from there. So it has the normal, um, you'll see I'll unbox the accessory box, which is uh, has a disc with the drivers. Also has the power supply, as I said, and it does have a couple trays for an additional hard drive. I only ordered this with one um, mechanical drive at a one terabyte because I had a Samsung 950 Pro NVMe I wanted to put in there. So that is the bonus you'll get at the end is uh, to see actually how to do that. And it's pretty important because you'll actually see the CMOS battery as well as we get into it. But I'll show you how to break it down towards the end of the video. So maybe you can not have to fight through because there's not a lot of instructional videos out there. But there's the cool little tags with the HDMI, Saber, uh, Sound Blaster, NVIDIA G-Sync. It's got the killer double shot pro and all the bells and whistles it's pretty much a desktop in a foldable fashion so here's the actual machine itself um, as any big 17 inch gaming machine it's pretty beastly the thing is uh, not light uh, weighing in around 10 pounds and i only got one 1080 in there but that's enough for me i don't need uh, to run uh, sli or anything like that to get what i want it does have 120 hertz monitor so that's pretty awesome for doing some FPS stuff I do. And feel free to come check me out on Twitch at any time. I'm still kind of getting used to it. Old time gamer kind of get back into it late in life. I'll say it that way. So you guys can um, see there's another shot of the stickers on the machine itself. And I'll show you right here kind of the ports and what to expect when you get it. So on the back, it's got that big four pin power connector, which I'm sure is just to handle that beastly amount of wattage it's going to need to keep itself up. It's also got one HDMI and one USB on the back. On this side, it's got a dual LAN port. It's got three USB, and then it's also got line in, line out, microphone, and headphone jacks, as we can expect, but it's always nice to have that line in, line out to really get customizable. This is kind of a big win with going with the Sager or Clevo. They're, they're not really so in the box. Now I'll show you this side has two USB or two um, Thunderbolt ports, display ports, and then it's got two type C. It's got an SD card slot and it's also got one more USB. So yeah, there is a ton on there. So when I tried to turn it on here, completely dead to the world, no power, shipped with a dead battery, which is fine. Uh, we'll get that charged and kind of show you guys uh, a couple things. I got some benchmarks at the end just early on using the basic overclocking stuff that's on uh, in Windows or the programs that comes with the Sager machines that they throw on there. So it's pretty cool. Um, pretty happy with the results so far. We'll go ahead and cut to getting it powered up and just to see that Sager emblem come up there. So uh, full RGB keyboard, enjoy that, you know, that that's fine, whatnot. I like purple, as you can see from my designs I got off to, behind my head and off to the side there. So um, get to have a little bit of customization. There are not, um, th the one thing I did miss, because I came from an Alienware and went to this, I, don't, I do miss the soft keys or the programmable keys. Now we're going to get straight into the bonus time, as you see here and show you kind of how to break the machine down. So as you can see here, I'm gonna point out the screws that need to uh, be popped out around the case. Those are pretty self-explanatory. I will say the only thing that I didn't love is there are screws with a very shallow Phillips bit, but you can pop these out um, and you can kind of work your fingernails around this edge that you see and start to pry apart and it just unsnaps once you get that going. So you can kind of see me fumbling around with that. 
but just work my fingernails. In between that, I was able to pop it out. I'm sure you can use a very soft tool. Next thing I'm going to show you here is the uh, battery screws that need to come out in order to pop the battery out. And it's just old time electronics. I like to disable any power going to the machine. And then there is one that says KB. That is what holds the keyboard in other than the clips on the other side. So go ahead and pull that off. And you can see here, I'm gonna try to highlight where you can pop the keyboard out. I will say it's a pretty uh, brittle plastic. So use something soft there. I didn't, you can see some little marks. And as you pry those little clips out and you have the screw out of the back, the keyboard pops straight up and you can slide it out, come up at about 40 degree angle, 45 degree angle, and it'll slide out. You can unhook the cables if you want, but there's the CMOS battery as promised, and you can see the NVMe slots right there. So it's pretty easily accessible if you know what you're doing to begin with, and you can see I put my 950 Pro as promised in there, and we're gonna jump right over into the final little section uh, and the wrap up. So. As you guys um, can see, it's pretty cool. Here's some of the specs. You guys can read over this. I won't bore you with all the details. I just had some minor overclocking going on. This is the um, hardware info program. You can also see the pass mark rating 15197, which is about as expected. 3D graphics marks, pretty decent. 2D is a little light. Uh, here's just a screenshot of the Cinebench off of running um running on this with the like i say a slight overclock uh, i just hit auto overclock and let it handle it and here is heaven at uh, 2k is 111 frames per second that's pretty good max fps up at 248 and then you'll see where i wrap up with right here's the 1080 uh, 197 frames per second really solid machine i'm super happy with this when you get down to it um and you look at what's out there today in, a, in the form of a laptop. You just don't get any close. This is a desktop in a box that folds up. It's heavy, but you know what? It's truly mobile. I did a great uh, event with the Extra Life team. We had a event where a bunch of streamers came down. We gathered up in a room and did like a 24 hour broadcast with Twitch. And to be honest, you know, it took me probably two hours just to take everything down, move my PC down there, uh, pop it back up and get going. And then another two hours takedown and Lord knows how, how much time I spent putting all this together back at home. Cause I'm like, Oh, I got to clean this stuff up. Well, you know what? Now I've got a laptop that'll do the same thing. This guy will game at high quality. This thing will, um, keep FPS up there with the best of them, especially running the, um, running the six cores and the 120 Hertz screen and I can stream with it, and it really doesn't tax it that bad. Yes, the fans are, it's got three major fans in there, heat sinks all in there to keep it cool, which is why I was a little bit nervous about throwing another 1080 in there. I didn't want to cram it too full because I don't want to be fighting heat all the time. So just very mild overclocking, didn't have too many heat concerns, at more than you would expect from a hot processor and a hot GPU pumping out that uh, heat. But other than that, great machine. Feel free to check it out. If you got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please come hang out with me in Twitch if you ever want to just chat about tech, you want to play games, whatever. Um, I like tech stuff. I like building it. I like tearing it apart. As you can see, you know, I had the computer for seven hours before I had it completely dismantled to put my NVMe in there. So anything I can uh, help you guys out with, you want to stop by, drop comments. If you want to see other stuff, I've got a ton of technology around me. I'm going to try to do some follow-up streams with that. I'm running a Ryzen system at home uh, for my main PC. And then I've got this, uh, it kind of gives me an Intel comparison. So if you liked it, throw in your subscribe, show your likes, and let me know anything in the comments you want to hear about this machine or anything else I've got. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day.